The video today will be all about circles. We're gonna go through circle breakdowns, squat and duo info, heal and catch the circle, how to win in the eighth circle, and then I have a healing challenge in the end. I hope you enjoyed this video because it took a hell of a long time to get this info and I'm just glad that now I finally get to share it with you. So enjoy the video. Let's start by bringing the first circle to the table and let's throw some stats on it. The first circle of the game is the big one having a length of 4550 meters which we all know is very big as the second one can be surprisingly far away from time to time. With these meter numbers I'm showing throughout this video they may be off by about 10 meters or less as these are calculated by using the map. Talking damage it takes for 0.4% damage every single second. It's worth to note that every single circle takes damage each second. Now the first tick when you enter the damage zone can happen from anywhere of 0 to 1 second as the damage ticks are being sent to every single player at the exact same time. So basically what that means is every single player outside the game zone takes damage at the exact same time. Simple enough. With these very low damage numbers you can easily survive outside the play zone without even using any consumables. The only way that I could actually get the exact numbers of how long a player can survive outside the circle was by parachuting out of the map. For anyone who thinks they can use this as an exploit, you cannot. You will die from the blue circle and lose the game. The blue circle takes a whole 5 minutes to connect to the white circle, which leaves a lot of room for making it there and planning how to get there. Throughout breaking these circles down, we're going to bring up two diagrams and a meter graph which we can use to compare their stats. The second circle is 1580 meters smaller than the first circle, leaving it at almost 3 kilometers. That's equivalent to three of the large yellow boxes on the map. Being outside the play area now takes for 0.6% of your health every second, but still with these puny numbers, you can survive outside for 2 minutes and 46 seconds. So there is no need to be afraid of being in the blue circle with this one either. It takes the blue circle 2 minutes and 20 seconds to connect with the white circle, which still is a lot of time to catch the circle. So now we have something we can compare on our graphs. At the third circle, we're now down to 1480 meters. This is the last baby friendly circle, as there's still a lot of room to play around with and the circle now is borderline ouchy. It's still only hitting you with 0.8% ticks, meaning it would take you 2 minutes and 5 seconds to get killed without using any healing. Players still have a lot of time to get in, as it takes 1 minute and 30 seconds to travel. If you survive this circle, then you best be ready for the hard work a chicken dinner takes to get. As we now move on to the fourth circle, the one where the non-worthy chicken dinner players gets eliminated. The fourth circle is where it starts to get tight on room, especially in solo queue as players are spread out a lot more. This is where we see a lot of players fall when racing for the good spots or pushing along with the circle. When they're pushing along with the circles, they're of course being forced to fight others who do the same. With this and the circle only being 740 meters wide, there's not that much room to play with and now it ticks for 1%. With this, you can survive for 1 minute and 40 seconds. To get your button safety, you have 1 minute total, which is still a lot of time to get in, even if you start to move late. But this is very much the start to the end game when we move to the fifth circle. Now the fun starts. Bad or simply unlucky decisions get you punished, throwing your hard work out the window. There's only 360 meters to play around on, which is almost the same as the bridges connecting the military base to the rest of the island. It now does 3% damage to players outside the play zone, which means you can only survive for 34 seconds without any healing. You will have 40 seconds to get to safety once the blue circle starts to move. So this is the one really connecting you to the late game. Number 6, which sometimes can be the end game circle. Especially when you're out in open areas, now I'm not talking fields, yada yada yada, where people lay down, no, really open areas. There's only 175 meters to play around with, and the blue circle now takes for 5%, which means that you can only survive for 20 seconds outside. This is a rather small circle, therefore the travel time is only 30 seconds. Some players wish these end circles had more travel time, or just more time to play around with, I feel it has a good timing but that's just my opinion as I like the intense rush with no long breaks in the end game, which really sticks your butt cheeks together. The 7th circle aka be Rambo and kill everyone 
or shut your mouth and only fire in case of emergency. 90 meters is all you get to move around on. The blue circle now takes for 7% damage, which means you can only survive outside for 15 seconds. The blue circle takes 30 seconds to bring in the 8th and last circle of the game. Now for the 8th circle, which is the last circle, the do or die. The circle never connects or makes a new one, instead it simply pauses when the blue circle meets the white circle. After this, it will continue to gather itself towards the center, where it will kill anyone remaining in the game. If you do not get to see your last enemy, maybe you're in a building or he is, she, huh? be sure to be maxed out on consumables and hit your med kit or first kit as soon as possible. This could potentially grant you a win, as it's not an instant death. You now have 40 meters and will end with zero. The circle now takes for 11%, so it hits hard which you can only take for 10 seconds. Here we have an overview of all the circles killing me. We can easily see that circle 7 and 8 hits like a truck. Circle 6 is a bit lower but still hits hard. At circle 5 is where things kind of slow down a little, where you'll be able to heal through it without really any trouble. And in the end we have circle 1 through 4 which is just baby damage compared to the big boys. So there's really no need to be super scared when you exit the circle late game just for a few seconds as you still can survive for some time. For circle 1 through 4 here, let's speed it up to 3 times the speed for like 20 seconds just so you can get a feeling of how long it actually takes. So you can see here even with the speeded up version, it still takes so much time to die outside. You can easily just with bandages heal through these 4 circles. So don't be scared of them. I bet you there's people just sitting outside as a tactic healing and then not running into like the fifth circle. But I think you get the point. If you haven't gotten any healing the entire game, you might die to it, but other than that, no. So let's bring some specific squad and duo information to the table, such as knockdowns, yada yada. At circle 6 through 8, don't even bother with resting your down mates outside the play area. A circle 6 takes for 5% each second, which is the total health they would get up with after being rest, and it takes 10 seconds to help a player up, so that would mean at least 50% damage taken to the player helping the knocked out teammate. In circle 5 you'd be able to survive for 2 ticks after being rest, so you will most likely be dead anyway. But in circle 4 you can survive for 5 seconds, this gives you room after being rest to make it back into the circle. While the player resting you will only take about 10% damage being outside the play area helping you up. That is of course not counting the running distance to the down player. So through circle 1 and 4 you can still survive and save your teammates butt, but in circle 5 they'd have to be 2 seconds away after being held back up to make it into the play area. As 2 seconds is not enough to use any healing and therefore anything more than 2 seconds would mean death. To get a feeling of how we can use healing to survive running into circles, let's have a look at this clip. Now I apologize for the bad quality, I do not have the original files anymore. We started here with a 5th circle, still able to heal through it, and here the 6th circle appears. We're still able to heal through this one, with a full health and no boosters we'd be able to survive for 20 seconds, but we have to take into account that we need to run closer after each first aid kit is used. So the 6th circle is the last circle where you can make it in from far distances as the 7th circle only leaves you room for 15 seconds of survival time. So with a full boost meter you'd still be in a world of trouble trying to make it back in. So here's a tip to win in the 8th circle. So what if we never see the enemy player, maybe we're at a building area, one of us is inside, the other is outside. Well here's the best tip you're going to get to win. Fully boost your meter and then go outside and take a ticket damage and pre-use your med kit if you have one 2 seconds before the circle will hit you. This will most likely guarantee you the win as the enemy player probably doesn't have this knowledge. The knowledge is that you can survive for 10 seconds outside and a medkit takes 10 seconds to use. So that gives you 2 seconds of error time when popping your medkit as the enemy player will most likely be scared and use the medkit faster than you. If you do not have a medkit then simply use a first aid kit. To do this take a bit more damage outside the circle you must be able to pre-pop it before the circle hits you. If you're without any first aid or med kits, you have room to use about 2-3 to three bandages before dying. To make some fun testing, I decided to ask my squad mates to gather all the healing they could before the first circle. 
I then said, I can survive for longer than you can in this match if you drop all your healing and I will not use a weapon. So we went with it and I had the following available. 9 first aid kits, 69 bandages, 6 painkillers and 7 energy drinks. Up until and with the 4th circle included, I could outheal the circles by only using bandages, which is pretty cool to know. If you bottleneck the bandages, it will continue to heal the remaining amount even after hitting the max part of the meter. At the 5th circle, with just some small boosters, I started having some trouble with the only bandages, so I had to throw in some first aid kits in between. This was the circle where I could move while healing without much trouble. Now when the 6th circle came. This is where we saw in the other clip too that that does a lot of damage. I had to keep my meter full while firing up some bandages in between the first aid kit. This is the last call to run and stop for heals while trying to get into the circle. This was the end of me as I ran out of meds but I almost made it further than them with only 12 players alive, one of them being me. So to summarize what we got from this, bandages can heal through circle 1 and 4. Circle 5 demands a little bit of painkiller slash energy drink action. In Circle 6, I had to use first aid kits. Circle 7 would be impossible to stay outside while healing and running. Alright, so here in the end, I didn't want to measure movement speeds of the blue circles as they're almost always going to be different as it depends on where the circles are placed. But I can tell you that you can drive faster than all the circles except the first one. I think we dug pretty deep into the circles here and I hope you got something that you can use. I most definitely learned a lot by doing this video. And oh my potato, it took a long time to get this footage and calculations without having a custom server. So if you made it this far into the video and have not subscribed yet, please consider to do so as it would help me greatly getting closer to becoming a partner with PUBG and therefore gaining access to custom servers and of course we can use those to play a bunch of fun community games with you the viewers through the discord and when i'm live streaming other than that that's the circles have an awesome day till next video stay cool